Welcome to Holy Trinity Cathedral on this Remembrance Sunday. And uh, thank you all for coming on what has been a blustery weekend. You will have noticed when you came in that if you came in by the north side of the hall, that the tarp has been blown away from our roof. So the roofers, I hope, will be coming this week to put the tarp back over. Good news is there are no leaves. Uh, the bad news is the handicapped parking space is inaccessible. And uh, there's a clause in my letter of agreement which says, I do not climb ladders for anybody. <laughs> so others will have to take care of that. Um, this morning, just a reminder that the order of service is found uh, in the bulletins with the hymns. If you want the musical settings, of course, uh, you can refer to them. They're in the blue hymnal. And as this is uh, Remembered Sunday, I invite you to stand and let us join in singing O Canada. Spirit be with you all. And also with you. 
Almighty God, to you all the hearts are open, all the desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts from the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may live together in freedom, justice, and peace. of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated and be attentive to God's word. wisdom of Solomon. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God retested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
from the first letter to Peter of Peter. Please, blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God, through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be. you 
Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I hope my voice will keep at a good pace for you. I arrived home from Colorado at 10:30 uh, last night, all told, um, and I had to have three cups of caffeine this morning <laughs> to be able to stand up. And those who see me on Wednesday, no. Two is enough to make me zippy, so. <laughs> Sometimes Christians assume only good things come to those who love God. And sometimes life seems to support the assumption. But at other times, it is clearly not true. Times when good people do suffer. Good people are killed, and even as one of the Psalms says, the evil triumph. Today's readings give us messages to encourage people in dangerous, deadly times. Words of encouragement, words of hope, words of promise. They reflect three different times, the readings we've heard. Times of trouble in the life of God's beloved people. All of them times when the questions could be asked, why are these good people suffering? Doesn't God care? Why did they die? Did they deserve to? They were righteous people. At such times, the living need encouragement. They need to know that God has not abandoned them and that defeat and death are not the end of our story. We need hope. Hope in God who is powerful and who cares for us on both sides of the grave. So we remind ourselves and one another that we have God's unbreakable promise as we hear Jesus' words to Martha. I am resurrection. I am life. Trust in me. My life conquers death regardless of what eyes see. Trust this. I promise you there is more to come. And of course, such words are shared with us today, Remembrance Day weekend. If only that were the only reason we needed to hear them. Words of encouragement, words of hope and promise are not needed just when good women and men die defending the lives of others. Think of Martha and Mary. It was one thing to know their brother had a life ahead with the patriarchs and all the faithful dead gathered in God's bosom. Can you imagine that hug? <laughs> but they needed Lazarus now, here, their male guardian as well as their brother. They needed more than promise and comfort, as special as these were coming from Jesus. Yet, their responses to him, honest and heartbreaking, were accompanied by actions that left the final word in Jesus' hands. And they could do this because of their love for Jesus, who had been like a brother to them, because of their trust in him. The troubled waters of their lives continued to roll on, but Jesus was there. 
thinking of them, thinking of their relationship with Jesus, these particular moments in their life, and thinking of the words he spoke to them, I found myself singing a song many of you will know. When you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all. I'm on your side. Oh, when times get rough and friends just can't be found, like a bridge over troubled waters, I will lay me down like a bridge over troubled waters. I will lay me down. Remember that one? We live in a very troubled time, a very troubling times. Just being a good person, a faithful Christian, doesn't seem to change it. Innocents are dying in front of us hourly. Evil is rampaging while world leaders seem paralyzed on the one hand or ready to make matters worse. Ukraine or the Holy Land, Taiwan or South Korea, each next step seems to bring only more destruction and death, more fear, whether you go this way or this way. At such times as this, the readings this morning come to us as a kind of bridge over troubled water to encourage us and to remind us of our hope. Why? Is that enough? Every day when you read your news feed, is that enough? I think their witness asks us to be courageous in such times as these. Don't give up hope. Take action for the things we care about deeply. Wars in the world, justice in our land, answers to housing crises around us, taking a stand against those who continue to put other values ahead of acting now to stop humanly-based damage to our environment, courage to do whatever thing, large or small, we can do because every life matters and every act makes a difference whether it seems to or not. We have to remind each other. The readings remind us that despite appearances, God's intention is not death, but life. One New Testament writer puts it like this, let us consider how we may spur one another and all the more, sorry, let us consider how we may spur one another on to love and good deeds encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. That's an awfully apt description of what this morning's readings are meant to do. When you're down and out, when you're on the street, when evening falls so hard, I will comfort you, I'll take your part. Oh, when darkness comes and pain is all around, like a bridge over troubled water, I will Trusting that our own bridge over troubled waters 
Jesus, God's love, God's power, knowing that there is still more to come as we hear Jesus say to Martha, I am life, I am resurrection. Jesus, who cried with her and Mary at the tomb, and then reanimated Lazarus, giving new life to what had been one of mourning and death. So to God has more to say. This is our hope. In times like these, it is the vocation of God's children to take action, not waste ourselves in paralysis. Take action. Offer comfort and hope to be bridges over troubled waters. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our song. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father of Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Let us prepare to offer our intercessions, petitions, and thanksgivings. Please stand, sit, or kneel. This is your last time. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God, God of compassion, give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss, God of compassion, give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return, God of compassion, give peace. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity, God of compassion, give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, God of compassion, give peace. 
for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military, and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. God of compassion, give peace. Most holy God, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us, who today remember the cost of war, to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all, in the end, to the peace of your presence, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Our offertory hymn is Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence.
for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, who led your people from bondage into freedom, through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them, and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim our hope. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come be Lord. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, giver of all gifts, the, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Holy One of Israel, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord. Amen. 
I am the bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Give it us this bread forever. I am the vine, you are the branches. May we dwell in Christ as Christ lives in us. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honor the past, may we put our faith in your future for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do the infinite glory we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for some brief announcements. First, I want to thank Greg Kennelly for bringing the flags representing uh, the nations of the Commonwealth and of Canada, the flags representing Canada in our uh, service in the world. And this is something Greg does a couple of times during the year, and I'm grateful to Greg for, for coming and bringing those flags. And also, yesterday, Greg represented the parish at the Cenotaph, uh, placing the wreath from Holy Trinity Cathedral at the Senate. So thank you very much for that service. I appreciate it. Uh, I also welcome Paula back from her travels. Uh, it means I don't have to answer the telephone and say, can I get back to you next week? Uh, but it's good to have Paula back and thank her for preaching today. Uh, this week we return to our regular uh, weekly schedule. The office will be open on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, and uh, we are moving quickly towards Advent, friends. Uh, Advent begins on the 3rd of December. So if uh, you're not getting ready for, for Advent, I'm giving you due, due notice. It is coming sooner than you may think, in three weeks. And we will have a joyous celebration of Advent leading into the Christmas feast. The other thing to allow us to remember is that Advent this year is short. The fourth Sunday of Advent is Christmas Eve. Yes. So if you count your way to Christmas from the first Sunday of Advent, you're going to be short. <laughs> That's true. And speaking of which, on, on the 24th of December, we will have a 10 o'clock service, which will be Advent, the fourth Sunday of Advent. And then we'll have a 7 o'clock service, which will be Christmas Eve. So we will switch at sunset. Now, and so just a... And also a reminder that we are scheduled for our Christmas concert. Uh, the plan is for the concert with the Royal Westminster Band, uh, Regimental Band, on Sunday the 17th, did we say two or three? Three, at three o'clock. Pardon me? 17th, Sunday the 17th. Okay. And we made it earlier in the day because in our past experience, the later it gets, the more of us kind of go, hmm. But at three o'clock in the afternoon, still plenty of sunshine out. So I hope that many of you will be able to join us. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the lover who created us, the beloved who redeemed us, and the love that unites us, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We join in singing our final hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
world to proclaim God's peace to those who are near and to those who are far. Thanks be to God.